That's all right. We got plenty. All right, here we go. This one's gonna be it's gonna be fun. This, like I said, may take five, six weeks. There's a lot to it. A lot of details in this in this water and and things. But once we get it going, you know, just just trust the process. Go one step at a time. Hang in there. Show up every week, and we'll we'll get through it. It's gonna be good. The um, to begin with. Uh, first of all, you see how it's a little smaller than the canvas. I want to set it all the way down. So I want a horizon line to be. So if you set this on the easel and set your picture on there, you can kind of make a mark here where the horizon, the water line is going to be. And that's really all we need right now. Um, just to get it straight, I'm going to use my paper here, which isn't all that straight, but it'll give me an idea where that line's supposed to be. So the challenges on this one are going to be a few. One, in order for us to get this really bright spot in the middle there, we got to have all this really dark stuff. So as, as always, value is more important than color. We see a lot of colors here, but your final colors that you end up with are far less important than your final values. If you don't get this dark dark enough and that light light enough, it won't look right. It'll, it'll look good, but it won't have the same effect. The sunset effect or it's late it's really dark down here we may even have to dip into some actual black when we get down here instead of making our own to get this as dark as it needs to be um, and the contrast of these really dark trees against that that bright horizon but to begin with the challenge is going to be just getting that background color in there and imagining the rest of this so seeing it without seeing it so the first step we're going to do is we're going to cover the canvas but instead of doing it as one solid color like we've done in the past what we're going to try to do and I say try because I'm going to try with you yeah. is we're going to try to get this sky color into a basic yellowish orange down here we're not going to do all this detail just yet and then let that color continue down into the water and our blue continues here so our blue is going to fade into this don't worry about the ripples we're going to do that later but the blue fading into this orange. So if you can imagine this without all of the black and white, just the sky and the reflection of the sky and the water, we want those colors blending together. So to make these colors, this is what's going to be, if you did the sunset over the marsh with us, you know the, what, the best way to do this is going to be, we're going to put some color up there and we'll get ready to do this bright spot. We'll go back and paint it kind of white and then tint it so that white will show through underneath. But for tonight, we're not doing the sun, we're not doing the clouds, we're doing a basic blue to this whitish yellow to orange and then to another blue. So in general, I'm going to get kind of my, my colors here. I know I want my, my blues to kind of go into orange along that line. So down here is blue and it's darker in this corner than it is up here. So it's going to gradually go here into an orange. In the sky, my blue kind of goes up there and it goes into more of an orange over here with yellow, whitish yellow in between. Now, if you've done this before, you understand the challenge here is that if you look at a color wheel yeah, blue green. that goes, let's see if I can do this real quick. If you look at a color wheel, it's an ugly wheel, but if you look at um, red, yellow and blue. Blue and yellow makes green. Red and yellow makes orange. Uh, red and blue makes purple, basically. You have to go in order around this wheel. You, if you try to jump from blue, uh, if you, in order to get from blue to yellow, which we're going to have to do in this sky, we got to go from blue on this side to yellow over here. In order to get from blue to yellow without having green in our sky, we got to go this way. You know, does that make sense? So in order to get from blue to yellow, you got to go through purple, through red, through orange to yellow. Right. If you try to go straight from blue to yellow, you're going to get green. green. And then green looks like a hurricane. Tornado. <laughs> hurricane. Tornado, hurricane. It doesn't look attractive <laughs> in the sky. Uh, it it's looks ominous. Scary. Easiest way to be to do that safely, I think, is going to be to do the blue, let it dry, and then come back and do the orange and not worry about getting them too close together because there's a lot of a lot of white really in between there. We don't really need the blue and the yellow to touch each other. But let's talk about getting this exact blue. And you notice this one is pretty close to here, but this is a little different down here than this one up here. 
I've got some ultramarine blue and some phthalo on my plate, so we're gonna start with that. And if you've got clothes you don't want to throw away, be careful with the stalo blue. Yes, <laughs> this stuff is toxic. It will get it is just that much, a little bit of it will get on everything. It's like magenta. Um yeah. you hear me that uh, just so I thought I got you know, so I didn't get this uh, may not need it right now, but let's see. Now everybody's got the print out. Um, use this to match to match your colors as you're making these colors. If I look at this blue, that's way too way too blue, it's way too dark. Go ahead and get some gesso in there too. Just a little to start with. So if I just went straight ultramarine blue, how close am I to that blue? And it's not very. I mean, it's a totally different blue. Yeah. You can tell. By adding a little bit of that phthalo blue in there, it gives it a different, I don't know what to call it, it's got a little different hue to it. Blue is the coolest color, but that actually warms it up somehow. It gives it a little bit of a warmer, warmer tone, which this is a very warm, it gives it a tone. very warm <laughs> sky. <laughs> Shouldn't take much of it either. You notice how I try to get my color close to right and then I'll get my, my value, my, my light to dark more, more right. And that's a lot more like it. Even more phthalo than that. So I, got, I got three times as much as I need right there probably. It's like the magenta, it don't take but a no. tiny amount of, of it. That's getting better. You just gotta play with this till you get it right. But it's some some measure of those those three colors, the two blues and the gesso. So that's pretty close right there. See that? Knowing that it's gonna dry a little bit different, and I can't, I'm not making a whole plate of it, so I'm not gonna worry, it's not like painting a wall. I just wanna put some of the color up there and push it around. So we'll start there with that sky blue, and that's a really pretty color. Just gonna put some of that on. And for now, because I do want it to kind of fade down, I think the easiest way to do that is going to be put it on quickly. Try to get it all out of my brush if I can. The Salo Blue will turn your brushes blue too permanently. <laughs> no, careful. But I think I want to go that way and then go just straight, straight gesso then underneath it. So mixing, you gotta be quick with this because this wet to wet mixing with acrylic is, is very time sensitive. But by doing it like that, I can kind of get a little bit of a fade one to the other. It doesn't have to be too clean, but I want it to be somewhat smooth. This is a first layer. We probably will put more layers of this on there. But by getting it on there and getting a little bit of a cleaner brush, come back and kind of smooth it out a little. This brush is not perfect for this. But get that close real gently. Yeah, well, my ain't gonna look like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's gonna look like that. We don't have clouds and other things in here. It's, it's your individual thing. Yeah, it's my yeah. For it's now, right. it's just like I missed you. Radiant, radiant this <laughs> time. <laughs> right. And so it gets lighter as it goes down until it disappears into pretty much white. If you keep working it, you're going to end up having it all the same color. So you get to a point and stop. That's good enough for now. Um, to the bottom now. The difference in the color at the bottom is it looks like it's a lot darker one, but it's also got a lot more phthalo blue in it. I'm going to get all that gesso out of my brush. You're having just another plate. I didn't have to begin with. Uh, trying to avoid that gesso. 
Thank you, thank you. Let's see here. Let's see if we get this. Get this blue close. Takes just a little touch of white just to be able to see what color it is. Got a little bit of brown in it because it's got a little, it's a little more towards black. Yeah, see how that gets mm -hmm. you put a little brown in it. That's going to be a lot closer, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's pretty close for the bottom, and it's going to be the black on the bottom. Where we're, we're going to put that in later. I'm looking for the base blue color, which is kind of there. So that's thylo and aquamarine. It's ultramarine, thalo, so and a tiny bit of brown okay. to get that color white too, I think. Okay, so just enough to make it show up. Yeah, so that's good and dark out there. Now, as I go up, it's going to get lighter, and it's going to follow this curve. That's so strong. It, if I try to just fade all the way up with it in my brush like that, it's going to cover the whole canvas. Right? <laughs> so I got to keep washing it out. Coming back with pure gesso. Nice and wet down there so it's got something to blend with. Now, this you definitely don't have to worry about brush strokes. Every bit of this is going to be covered. <laughs> If anything, you want to have your strokes kind of going in that that general direction. Maybe it, the strokes kind of the, the ripples kind of go this way. So that's a way to blend it, maybe. I just want it to get lighter as it goes up. How many months we <laughs> tonight? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> you really do have to do this this wet and wet you really do have to do it quickly yeah so that's working that's that's giving me more of a gradient but i don't want to get down in that dark stuff too much pick a little bit of it up and bring it up here that's that's pretty close for the blue let's go ahead and get that far and then we'll come back after this dries and put some orange in there all right, we're going to try to put some of this yellow in, or some of this orange sky color in. Um, I've got a good bit of white, you know, pure white right in here. If you don't have that, you may want to start there. Put some white in, fade it up into the colors. And you notice this is not a good smooth gradient. It doesn't have to be just yet. Um, the goal here is to get some patches of color in that kind of will fade into the other colors. You don't want to have a a purple block there, but you're going to have some purple that kind of fades off gradually into the blue. And some yellow on this side that does the same. So, um, Let's start with the bottom. I think it'll be a little easier. Um, I was playing with these colors to try to mix that orange and that blue, and I found the right orange and the right blue, that the blue that I already have and the orange that I want. And just to show you what it does, I blended those two together. You see that color in the middle right there? We don't want that color. That's ugly. <laughs> You don't see that color on here anywhere because that's not really a gradual <laughs> fade. We'll make it fade with all the little pieces in the middle, but that color we don't want. So I want it orange to blue, but it's not going to have a hard line between the two, but they're also not going to fade into that, you know, khaki yeah. color. So that's not a good color. So to start with to make that, uh, to make that orange, we're going to start with a lot of yellow and you're going to have to have some gesso in it or else it's just going to be completely see-through. Mm -hmm. So first thing is get some yellow with a little white. You notice you can add white to it and it doesn't really change the mm -hmm. color that much. It just makes it a little more solid. And then this is vermilion. It's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. So you may want to start kind of off to the side with it and work it in to the yellow. If not, you'll end up with a growing and growing plate <laughs> full of that color. Now. <clears throat> these colors are opposite of each other. That's why they're not really 
you know, able to mix real well. When you mix opposite colors, you get shadow colors. So you get these, these grays and browns like we got here. Um, and we don't want the shadow color in there. We want, and I'm close to the color, but I'm way too dark. But when you mix it, instead of just mixing one spot and keep adding paint to it, always add it off to the side mm -hmm. and, and get it, you know, that way if it's too light, I can pull it in a little further or too dark, I can add a little more white to it. So start dark, add your, add your white a little at a time to it. Much easier to make it lighter mm -hmm. than it is to make it darker. So that's pretty close mm -hmm. right there. Yep. It may need to be just a little more vermilion in the in the hue of it, but not the value. The value is good. I think that's probably going to be it about right there. Now that is going to be my, I don't know, when I put it on the canvas, it looks very peach, doesn't it? It looks peach on there, too. Yeah. It's pretty peach, yeah. It is. It's Maybe it'll look peach. right it's once I get it. You almost have to kind of just trust it sometimes because it's... Probably it's tropical orange. <laughs> yeah, I like that sound. <laughs> so there's the general idea of this color. Now, I want it to, instead of fading necessarily into the blue, because it's like I said, we can't do that because of the colors are mm -hmm. gonna run together. And this this top line, I'm eventually gonna straighten up when I put my trees yeah. and stuff in there, but mm -hmm. I just wanna get up to it for now. Straight up to it a good, good bit. But as I go down, I'm just gonna kinda let that disappear towards the blue. And if you go with a little bit of a back and forth stroke like this, you get a little head start on the texture of that water, which we're gonna, you know, of course, cover cover most of this up. Almost all of this is gonna cover up. <laughs> this is still our underpainting. This is the step that sometimes we make it all one color and just paint the whole canvas one color. This is just to put some paint on the canvas stage. So just specific paint. I, I start in here and get the paint off my brush, and then as it starts to dry out, I'll come back in here and just kind of let that dry paint other area. Mm -hmm. now, it is a little more yellow up towards this area. While that's wet, I'll put a little yellow right up here. Mm -hmm. Just give it a little hint of yellow there. The other thing you can do, since my blue is completely dry, and make sure yours is if you're going to do this, mm -hmm. clean it off, leave your brush a little bit of water on the brush, and you can come back and kind of scrub out this bottom edge just to soften it a little. But you see, if you get too much on that blue, you're going to get some ugly colors, mm -hmm. greens and whatnot. So I think that's probably close enough to the, to the fading one color into the other. So okay, it's not a smooth transition. There is a line there, but we're gonna we're gonna be able to put we gotta put all this water stuff in there. Now that's the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> the sky, there's a couple of pockets of color, and again, trying to ignore the clouds, trying to ignore um, the sun sunrise, which we'll put in later, and that big cloud there. It, aside from that, you've got some blocks of color. You got a little bit of like a purple shade right in here. And you got a lot of yellow right in the middle, and you got a lot of whitish mm -hmm. color up in here, whitish blue, kind of what we already have there. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to some of those colors. I think the purple will be a little easier to get to first. Blue plate to do that. For that, I'm gonna use some some of the blue I made earlier, which is ultramarine blue with phthalo. Starting with that blue white. That's pretty close to where my blue was and I think then I can add some of this magenta or it's uh yeah it's a different name up there but you see what it is. Mm -hmm. Rouge or whatever they call it. We'll put a good bit of that in there and give me a purple. When I think I'm close to the to the color to get the hue of it right then I'll start adding some white to it. Try to get the value right. That's very bright purple right there. That's not even close. <laughs> Let's start. Get over here. Try to add a little of that to it. Let's get some white in there so I can see what color I'm starting with. That's too pink. And this is too purple. The problem is it has a little bit of that peachy color to it. Mm -hmm. You may have to go into the vermilion just a little bit. 
peach color. That's a lot closer, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, that's an odd combination of colors right Here's there. Purple, pink. Purple, <laughs> pink, and <laughs> it's a little bit of orange. It's a pretty color, though. Just that with some white. Kind of got to play with it until you get it right. Yeah, that's really close. What you get is yours. So, uh, you know, remember how you made that color because those colors, <laughs> we're going to use them again further into the painting. You know, you get a lot of these colors show up in the water. Let's see how close that is. Not very. A little more. On the orange side with it. That's better. I think that's pretty mm -hmm. close. Yeah. Now, it's going to change slightly when I put it on here. Um, and I put it on a little dark to begin with. Just going to kind of let that fade out on a little block of it there. And I'm going to take my brush, clean that out, try to just feather some of that out a little bit. And I've got a second brush here that's clean. I'll go into that white just a little too. Let that transition a little bit with the white. And I've got another dry brush here that you can kind of come back and lightly blend that if you're careful. We've still got to do clouds up here. We still got to do some other things. So you're really just trying to make it have a patch of color there without having without it being too big of a you know just iso a big block there. Let's see a little more of that Some color in there. I may need to come back later and put another color in the middle of this to let it blend a little bit more. But that's where my clouds are going to be too so that can be a little weird that needs to be. Alright, so there's a patch of that color. Get it there. Alright. And now the yellow. Another plate here. <laughs> Again, a lot of yellow. Pretty good bit of white. Colors are just so bright in the sky. You can't shy away from them, you know, or they won't, they won't, uh, won't look right. It's okay that the yellow covers that color. It blends a little with that color. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It just can't blend with blue. <laughs> I'm gonna, this is all covered up by that orange cloud, but I'm going to go ahead and put it behind here. This little section here. And of course our bright sunlight right in the middle is going to be there. But as this goes up, it pretty much goes white mm -hmm. into the blue. And that's okay. That keeps us from having to go all the way through the, through the rainbow with it. Yeah. If you start getting green, just stop in your tracks, wipe it off, fix it. You don't want green in your sky. line up here but I'm gonna put clouds up there so I'm not too worried about that. Put some white soften some of that a little Pretty light right there in the middle. And now that's pretty much the whole canvas covered with paint. <laughs> Again this don't look exactly like it does in the picture but you just want those background colors. Right. We're going to put the clouds and put all the other things in there that make it work. But right now, we just want that background colors. Mm -hmm. 
streakiness is okay too. All right, have fun with that. We're gonna do just sky tonight. Like I said, if it's just below that. this horizon line, ignore it, completely forget about it. And don't worry about these trees and all, we'll put all that in later. We're just focusing on the clouds and the sky tonight. Um, it doesn't matter if yours ends up looking exactly like this. Good. As long as what you've got, <laughs> yeah. as long as your overall colors here are going to match your overall colors in the water, it's going to be fine. If yours is a little more yellow, a little more red, a little more orange, not going to be the end of the world. And if you don't have perfect clouds, fine. Your clouds don't have to look exactly like these clouds. I say it all the time, but this part needs to look just not weird. Yeah. You know, it don't need to be perfect. It's not a masterpiece right here. It just needs to not look weird. Now, unfortunately, clouds are easy to make weird. It's easy to get, you know, Charlie Brown clouds up there if you're not careful. Um, so, we're going to approach this in a couple stages. First thing I'm going to do is smooth out this sky a little bit so that when we put clouds on there, so I got brush strokes and I got things. Yours may be a little smoother than mine already, but smooth it out. That's step one. Step two is I'm going to get these um, these kind of soft clouds in here. And that's where I want to show you kind of the technique. We'll use a technique on those, kind of a dry brush technique that we're going to end up using down here in the water too. So um, third, and that'll be all of this too, all these clouds. The third thing is we're going to, this really bright spot, we're going to do it in white and make a white glow there. And then the very last thing will be to tint that. So hopefully we got four steps to do tonight, but we got to do them <laughs> timely. we got to be never timely. Never. So step yeah. one, let's just smooth this out. And this won't take but a minute. And we'll get a kind of a little bit bigger brush. The key to this is going to be getting your colors right. If it's kind of the same color you used before, you don't need much paint and you don't need much time because you're not redoing it, not painting it completely again, just basically putting another coat on it to smooth it out. That's just gonna cover my brush strokes a little bit. It don't matter if you have something showing through, but I'm just gonna you know, just make it a little bit more smooth. I've got a little more water in my paint than what I had before, because it's a little more yeah. transparent when you do that. I'm just trying to get these uh, transitions between the colors to be smooth. lighter area. I could probably have used a bigger brush. <laughs> this little one is, it works okay because I got some smaller areas to work, but if you need to get to smooth it, I may even still grab my big brush and smooth it out. See that looks better already. And again, don't end up with green <laughs> up here. Yeah. Back to blue up here. Water. Water. Now, it would be very good if we could do this quickly, let it dry, and not have all the blow dryers going so much since it is so hot here. <laughs> I'll say mostly. You want to hold it? I, mostly the front row's fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. First table front row. <laughs> <laughs> My yellow is pretty um, smooth already. I just need yeah. to transition it a little bit up into that white a little more up into that blue. Since it's kind of dry, you can see I'm getting there pretty good without getting any green. Mm -hmm. The point to this is you don't want to get a whole ton of paint and make it really creamy and mm -hmm. start doing a whole nother, don't start over with the paint. <laughs> this is just adding some thin layers to help it blend a little bit. A lot of this is going to be covered, so I'm not too worried about that part. And same with that red part. There's a lot of that that's going to be covered. But I'll get a little bit on there just to see if I can get that transition to work. For, the, for that P 
peach color over there. Y'all remember how you made all these colors? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. No. <laughs> no. I'm not sure, but I'll try. And look how little bit of color it made uh, for each uh, one. I'm not doing a whole plate of each color, so that's yeah. that's important. Blue and the red and the pink. don't really want a lot of hard edges. You have too much water in that. Yeah. Yeah. That works. So, okay. So it's a little bit smoother. It's already kind of giving me a little few clouds, but let's get it smoothed out. Give it a few seconds to dry. If you don't put too much paint, it won't take long to dry. And then we'll pretty big. We'll give about. All right. So now we're gonna go. We're gonna move on to the these clouds. There's really two sets here. You got the little bitty ones up here that are kind of wispy and light that are in the background. We'll start with those and these up here. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna put this front in. But we know we're gonna we know we're gonna do this later. So don't worry about right. this glowing thing in the middle. It almost looks like it could be like a mountain range back there, this part. It's kind of a more solid kind of gradient. But it's real smooth <coughs> from orange over to that purple color. Um, but let's start with those wispy clouds. Okay. I've got a couple of brushes here. These are all, they're flat, but they don't have to be flat, but they're soft bristle, you know, um, brushes. The very important, very important trick to this is you want the brush to be pretty much dry. All right? Yeah. Pretty much dry. So for these clouds up top, these little light ones, let's start with them. This little light pink clouds up here. I don't want to go straight to that color. I want to do a light color in the background. Like I've already kind of got some here where it's by accident. So I'm going to use some of that. <laughs> and then come on top of it with that lighter color. So if these are not white. Don't start with white and start painting clouds with white. That's not, not how we're going to do it. None of this is going to be white. But I'm going to find that color. And you say it mostly looks white because the clouds are white, right? But look how, close, how much it's not like white at all. Um, so... I'm actually going to use a different plate because I don't want a lot of water in this either. I'm going to start with some white and pull some of my pink that I had in there. I'm not going to make much of this paint at all because, like I said, you want to use a dry brush. So here's the thing, I made the paint, I mixed it with this brush, but I'm going to take this brush now, clean it out completely, dry it off completely, come back and pick up the tiniest amount of this paint, kind of tap it off, it's barely got any on there. And I'm, again, look at where your painting kind of gives you suggestion of where those clouds should be, and that's still too, too dark. Let's be a bit lighter on that. Dry, dry. And with that dry brush, it's kind of scrubbing mm -hmm. to where the edges just disappear. And if you use a flat brush, it lets you, having it flat horizontal this way, kind of keeps that shape. They all kind of have that little bit of a horizontal shape. You start with the tiniest amount of paint and working brush back and forth really quickly, you can kind of soften all those edges. Now, if you put a big glob of paint and you have to soften it, then you end up with this massive <laughs> cloud with hard edges and that's <laughs> not what we want at all. <laughs> so some of the bigger thong was better. <laughs> right. <laughs> now you need to make these have some space between them, have some blue showing between them, mm -hmm. but they don't need to look like spots on a Dalmatian, you know, they need to be perfectly spaced out. And <laughs> see how much, see how much mileage you can get out of that brush mm -hmm. when it's empty almost? Yeah. How much of that you can do? Good. So these are the these are the kind of lighter colored patches that are going to have a little more pink on top of them in a second. 
<coughs> if you do it this way, <coughs> you don't really even have any drying time. That's dry already. Mm -hmm. um, but notice these up here are more gray. They almost have yeah. a they almost have a dark kind of a, a gray color to them. Let's see what that looks like. Make a little black, a little gray. brown. <coughs> Put some white in that. Gives me a little bit of a gray color. Maybe I have some pink in it too, or? The upper, the, the front layer wheel, but the back layer is just gray. I mean, really almost no paint in that brush mm -hmm. at all. Some of these up here that are kind of gray can do that. And don't worry about making one cloud and then one cloud and one cloud. Just kind of work the brush till the paint gets out of it. It'll shape. It'll give you a shape, you know. I don't want a storm. <laughs> no storm cloud, but uh, we're straightening her just enough. So that's a little dark, but I'll come back and add some pink. So now, and I'm going to do that all the way across. I'm going to do some bigger ones, smaller ones, looking at your picture to see what colors they are. When you come back, color a little at a time. I've got a darker version of it here. This time you want even less paint on the brush. And kind of go in the middle of this cloud and now it's a little smaller. And the reason I said get a couple of brushes is sometimes you get in this where you get paint on there. And then you need... You just want to use a clean brush to kind of push it around, a drier brush. That would work any better than anything. There's enough paint to even push. But it don't take much. It don't take much at all. And I don't want to completely cover up my white like I did just then. <laughs> Leave a little bit of it showing. See how that works? Just little wispy, light things. Remember, go off the canvas with it. Go off the top. Go off the sides. Um, if you notice, there's there's a more concentration of clouds at the bottom than there are at the very top. There's a little bit of blue sky showing. So don't, you don't have to get too too carried away with them. Those uh, those gray ones have a touch of this. A touch of this pink too. That'll make them look a little more right. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to adjust your color a little along as you go across the painting too to see what it needs and what, what it looks like it needs on there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to come off the top just a little bit just so it doesn't look weird. There, barely any paint in this brush. I can't emphasize that enough. You put a lot of paint on it? <laughs> yeah, you do that, boy. Some of, the, some of the people I share the front row with do like to put a lot of paint on it. Why do you paint? It's a painting. You do that and see how it turns out. So these look like cotton candy little like individuals. Right now I'm going to work on that. That shouldn't end up looking like that. But I'm going to move on to the next section just so you see what to do next. So we're going to get those in kind of all the way across, you know, Same color, probably. look at your picture, yeah. look at here than they are here. And you may want to start on this side behind this tree where you can kind of make some mistakes. The next part is going to be this, practice area back there. this really dark area here across. Yeah. For that color, that's what's going to end up matching our water in the bottom. But like I said, forget the water for now. The color here, <laughs> don't base it off of this because this is not final. Right. We'll adjust this to match what our sky. We want the sky to look more like what's in the page, in the print, than we do in what's already on the canvas. Um, so that color, I can tell it's going to have a lot of vermilion in it. Got some yellow in it. Probably more yellow. Pretty dark. A little bit of white in there, but it a whole lot. That's one of the colors. That's the color kind of in here. Maybe a little lighter. Not a whole lot lighter, but that's pretty much my color right in there. Up above there, you see it gets into that kind of purplish blue color. So before I put any of this on the canvas, I'm going to make these. Make these colors ahead of time. <laughs> That's 
for that transition between the. So I'm going to kind of treat this, like I said, especially on this left side. I'm kind of going to treat it a little bit like it's a like it's a mountain range almost, because I, I don't need to leave the white at the bottom. I can come all the way down with that. I'm going to put that back in later. Um, but the tops are invisible. The tops are going to be. I mean, there's a pretty hard line there, but it's for for the most part that top needs to be pretty fuzzed out. Yeah. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to do it kind of quick. Um, <clears throat> start with, start kind of here in the middle. Get some of that color. And see my yellow showing through is gonna adjust that color a good bit too. Get some color on there. If it takes a couple of layers of this, that's okay too. Because since you just made it, you should know how. Right, right. <laughs> That's the reddish color up the top. And before this paint has a chance to even think about drying, come back with my other brush and really disappear that top edge. quick and it's starting to have a hard line there if it does that you can break it up the water but then you have to once you put that water on there you got to get it off I'm gonna take a couple of layers of this I can tell that is not working for me It'll take a couple layers because that's not getting dark as I want it. I want it intense like that, like that picture. But I'm gonna let that dry and come back to it. Same thing on the right. The colors are gonna be a little different on the right, but they, the intensity of that color on the right, it's got more magenta in it. Yeah. Yeah. More. That line, this line right in here, is pretty. Um, Pretty hard line in the picture. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a pretty good purple. Ooh, that's purple. Yeah, it is. I like it. Gotta get, gotta get intense. I like it. I like it. Take your dry brush. There you go. Just fuzz that out, then. It's a pretty good line, though. On, yeah. On that one. Buzz it out. This is creeping away from me. Like it was really fixing it, really good. Off the table. It's that dry brush. It pushes it all around. It's weird to transition those colors because it makes some weird colors in between, but that that vermilion into purple. Yeah. It's pretty prominent in this. Those lines up there are a little more solid mm -hmm. they are. in spots. For the most part, there's a couple little breaks in there. A little bit like that. As long as your strokes are horizontal, it's okay yeah. if it shows some stroke. Mm -hmm. This gives you some more cloud layer. Yeah, and I'll do a few. I'll do a few layers of this too, probably. Before that gets too dry, though, I'm going to come on down to my next color. Thing is, yours doesn't have to look exactly like the exactly like the picture. Yeah. 
you sure it won't? <laughs> and it'll all look, everybody's will look a little different than the last. But the general shape of it, the, the transitions between the colors, and the general shape of how this okay. land looks is what we're going for. Right. And this looks like a mess right now. It's going to take a couple layers to make it look smooth. <laughs> to make it look right. Yeah. No question in my but I'll come back on top of this um, on these edges where I need them softer. Yeah. And put some uh, little cloud stuff to kind of to help me blend that. Yeah. And this these edges are a little harder, but the splotchiness in there will be fixed by more layers. <laughs> so the fluffy clouds, this color, more fluffy clouds. And just know that when we come back, we're going to do the glow here in the middle. Okay. All right, I put this tape on here just so we can kind of ignore ignore this bottom half because it's really hard to visualize what it needs to look like. This looks like a hot mess right now, but um, and it may not improve a whole lot. I'm, if I'm honest with you, um, but I'm, for this glow, for that bright glow right here, and it's about right here. Canvas. Notice that we're going to have the silhouette stuff in front of it. So if you put your glow right on the horizon and then you go back and paint this, you're going to cover it up. So look how high it's a, it's a good inch above the horizon right there. So really to about here. Um, but we'll do it like we've done before on some others where we just put it in in white. And it's going to take a couple of layers of this white, especially in the very middle of it. White gesso or white? This is just gesso, just gesso right now, I'm sorry. It kind of has a little bit of a dome shape to it. Actually, it kind of goes all the way out there. And the hard part about this is going to be throw this on quick and you got to soften that top edge as much as possible. It doesn't have to be you know, perfect, but it needs to be a lot softer. <coughs> that with my dry brush and you know finger painting too makes it a lot easier. That paint is so layered underneath there. See how it's like streaking uh -huh. funny? It's going to take some layers of this gesso to make it work right right here. So I'm not worried about the, the middle of it just now. Just that soft edge. Get the edge kind of soft. But if it takes if it takes layers of this, you know, if it takes five layers of it, I want this part right here to be solid white. Okay, And it will. It'll take It'll take letting it dry and, and you know, putting some more on. At this point, there's so many layers of that paint that's dry, but it's not really cured yet mm -hmm. that it's uh, still rolling up a little bit on me. So if you wait till next week, though, to put this in, then we're going to have to glaze over top of it. And then you run the threat of it puddling up on you because you put wet on top of dry. So. I'd like to get this in this week, if possible. I'm trying to make that come to a point. I want the arch. <laughs> I think that works. Just super bright in the middle. If I keep doing it, it's just going to roll up. It's not going to do any better job of covering. So I'm going to stop with that. I will put just a couple of little spots too of where it, if I can, I'm using the brush. Same kind of thing. A couple of spots in here where it looks like it just shines over into this area. When I come back and glaze that with the yellow, all that all that white stuff will be bright yellow. Yeah, a little over here, even though this is going to be covered up. So, after that dries, I'm going to put another layer smaller and another layer smaller so that the very center right here, and I may even use some titanium white in the middle, but at the very middle of it. At the top of it, though, because we've got to put the dark 
in front. What now? Yeah, because we've still got to put our dark. Yeah. So I figured my, my dark area is probably going to come to about here. So my brightest area probably needs to be about right there. If that makes yeah. sense. So get that far tonight so that can cure so we can color. So I hope everybody's to this point. No, but I will be. The goal for tonight is going to be to finish the sky completely, including the, the land mass here. And we're going to work some of that color down into this water. Now we got layers and layers to go on this water. So don't, mm -hmm. you're not trying to do anything final down here, anywhere close to it. But the, uh, the color of it, the tint of it, we might work on a little bit tonight. The first thing I'm going to do is all this yellow that I did white. And hopefully you've got that in there. The goal for now is just to paint, to tint that yellow. So first thing, and it's by doing it last week and let it sit, it's nice and dry. We can come back and put some really watery okay, yellow blue. paint on here. I'm just going to come straight into the yellow with some water. I'm not going to put any white in it. I'm going to put just the tiniest amount of that uh, vermilion in there. Get it a little bit, a little bit warmer. That's too much. <laughs> yeah, that looks about right right there. Now I did the little sun, sunrise here, sunset, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and the little clouds that trickle off of it, but I also did kind of some under clouds here, which will also be tinted. And that's pretty strong. If it's too strong, don't add white, just add more water. Mm -hmm. But the more you spread it out, the lighter it's gonna look anyway. And I'm just gonna put this color over pretty much uh -huh. everything. Um, We'll work this little stuff out first. This is kind of a magic part right here. I don't want to get up into the uh, into the blue. I don't yeah. want that to be green. But we we'll go up to it for sure. And so as I get higher up, I'll come back with just pure water on some of that stuff at the top. Got to soften it a little. You get, yeah, you can pat it out. See what it needs. But by covering all of it with it, even my, even my pinks and my, uh, this, you get that big blob of paint. Right? Mm -hmm. But it it, tint, it makes it all kind of marry together, um, kind of joins those colors a little bit mm -hmm. more harmoniously, I guess you say. Mm -hmm. I need a little more harmony. <laughs> <laughs> This should really you know, not take but just a few minutes. Yeah. You did all the work already by putting the white in. Talking about green sky, mm -hmm. um, Sunday evening when we wanted visitation mm -hmm. and a nasty thunderstorm, that nasty thunderstorm yeah. went through and knocked the power out. We were driving to that and I was like, oh, there are green clouds in the sky. That is not good. <laughs> That's we don't sign. want green. Uh -uh. I was like, that never is not a sign. good sign. So that... Uh, that white disappeared real fast. How that kind of puddles, pools up right there, it's okay. But when it dries, it won't have that texture. Yeah. Um, it's because I'm not using any paint, really just using yellow water. Oh. Now, I've covered it all, but I'm going to go ahead and cover some of this down here as well. And this is, like I said, just another layer of, of several. But each time you do something up there and then you do it down here, it kind of married, keeps those colors looking like they belong together. Just a little bit. Just enough yellow there to make that kind of match what's above it. Now, as this dries, and it's going to dry pretty quick because it doesn't have... Like I said, it's just mainly water. Mm -hmm. It's going to dry pretty quick, but you want to make sure it's good and dry before you try to do another layer of it. Yeah. But when it dries, I'm going to uh, let it dry, then I'm going to put just another layer, I think, on just this bottom part, because mm -hmm. it's pretty yellow. Right. It's really yeah. bright right there. Mm -hmm. And then I may come back and put some more white underneath just to make it even brighter. Um, so let's all get that far first. Let's get our tinting done and our uh, everything we're going to do to the sky done first and then we'll come back and work on our our uh got the tin in i put a little bit more white at the bottom to give that a little more glow um and you notice i put my tape on here 
And you looking at it, you're going to think that tape is crooked on there. <laughs> but what was wrong is that line was crooked yes, before. Um, and I encourage you to do this measure yes. in three spots yeah. to make sure that that horizon line is straight. Yeah. And because we're gonna, this is the time to adjust it. It doesn't matter that that gap is there because we're about to paint over that anyway. Paint over um, everything else, don't we? So just like the last painting oh. we did where we had the glow behind it. Mm -hmm. I want to do a little bit of that. We're going to take a little bit of, um, I guess, artistic liberty with this <laughs> background right here. Um, what I like about it is I like how the dark orange glows through in spots of it mm -hmm. here and there. And you can't really see it too good in here, but I think we can make it look better. Mm -hmm. But I also, this weird dome here is a little weird to me. I think I'm just going to run some trees and stuff over here. But notice this little building over here too. Got little shapes and things there. I like that. Um, so I may incorporate a little bit of that. And the biggest thing is this is where you can really take a chance to uh, cover up anything you want to cover up. Yeah. So my my sunrise here is a little lower than some people's. So I'm going to let my tree line come a little lower right here, you know, to make up for that. Now I got a weird spot up here that I don't like too much, so I'm going to let my trees get a little bigger <laughs> over there, you know. So I, I would say. Pre-game it a little bit. See what you want to do, how you want it to, you know, look yeah. before you start. Kind of get an idea of where you want things. Mm -hmm. Knowing that this is going to be kind of covered by trees, so I wouldn't worry too much about this side. But what's right in front of here is going to be your, you know, focal point right there. There's going to be a, a lot of contrast, so make this right here look really good. Um, and the rest of it, just make it not look bad. <laughs> do that, right? Yeah, no, that so works. encouraging. Um, I'm going to start with just some vermilion. I'm not going to put any white in it. I'm going to put just a touch of yellow in it, but it's mostly going to be vermilion. And this kind of can serve as your, your drawing, you know, your, to kind of see where you want to go. I think, like I said, this side doesn't matter as much. I want that to be a little darker. I think I'll put a little brown. I'll put a little brown in that. Make it a little bit more burnt looking, yeah. Word for it. Let's see. Yeah. Throw these in there. Now, I'm putting the paint on, like we did before, on the other one. I'm just going to put some paint. And before I get too far with this, uh, let's see. Let's take dry brush, little dry brush. brush. And I just kind of want to fuzz out the top of it a little bit. I'm going to put my black right on top of this, and I want some of this to show through, but not a whole lot of it. Yeah. I really want it to be fuzzy on the top. I'm going to be careful, though, as I get into this white, because I don't want to get it too dirty in here. I may not fuzz it out as much right in here. I'm going to put the orange with the, with the knowledge that I'm going to cover it all up, and some of it may poke, poke through. Right here in this in this area, though, is where you're going to have the most focus. So spend a little more time making this look good. This is just letting my brush do the treetops. As I get, like I said, if I get out of this area and get to the side, I'm going to make this and a lot more fuzzy as I get out here. Fuzz the top out over here. And as I get way over here, this is not going to show up as much. I'm going to darken it up just a little as I get away from the sunshine and so I can see it a little better but I do want to get this side to be quite a bit bigger <coughs> it kind of gives the illusion that that's further back mm -hmm. which I like Out, 
Let's do let's do this first and then come back and do the black. Let's take about 15 minutes to do this. Colors here. This is black, just brown and brown and blue gives us this black. Um, that's going to be more on the outside edge here, outside edge there. As I get towards the middle, I put a little bit of the vermilion in there, so it goes to that shade just a little bit. I want to kind of gradually get into that color. So I want to have made both ahead of time. You don't want a whole lot of water, and I'm going to let this brush. I'm using this dagger brush again, just kind of letting it separate a little bit. Now the black, I'm going to be more careful with it this time to not to not be as fuzzy, and I want to make sure I let some of that orange kind of show through through and above so leave some holes you know yeah. to let that glow happen and I'm really just trying to focus on that treetop edge a little more, a little more paint in some spots you may want to come above it some spots maybe below it <coughs> this one's not separating this here there we go so you're going to be at mine, that's real nice and separated. <laughs> and then at the, uh, at the base of it, it's pretty solid. He's good. Yeah. Tap it so it doesn't have a weird texture. But we do want it pretty solid at the base. Work that over a little. And every once in a while, I'll have one that comes up a little higher. And when this is all said and done, I may come back and put another coat on the bottom half just to get it good and solid at the bottom. But at the top edges of the trees, I do not want it to be right. very solid. It's got to have some, some lacy little holes in there. Following my design here that I laid out with the orange. Now, as I'm getting closer here, I'm going to come into that more brown color. I didn't clean the brush out, so it'll probably transition pretty good. I'm being a little more careful here in the sun to make sure my top edges look look good. This brush, this brush is not damaged enough. It's a very subtle color difference there. I'm going to let a little bit more of that orange show in the middle here. And when I come back to solid up the black at the bottom, I'm not going to do that in the middle here. I'm going to solid it up on the outside, but let the middle kind of be a little more orange. And that's not exactly like the photo, but we're going to take a little bit of liberty with that to give us a little bit more advantage making that look more like a glow. That is pretty tremendously for Are we doing that hump thing in the middle? No, I'm, I'm putting trees there. I didn't, <laughs> just I just didn't trees. like the guy who bought that land and cleared all that out. I didn't approve of that. <laughs> just like Georgia Power, he didn't have to Right. <laughs> so now that I'm getting back over into the other part, I'm going to get back into my black. Beat up here. <laughs> it's got a little more uh, vermilion in it. It was just the black with a little vermilion added to it. Yeah. The middle color is black with vermilion added to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Not brown. Well, the black that I made, you know, it's not too black. Yeah. We ain't got the too black yet. Yeah, we might on this painting. But he added the vermilion to it instead of brown to make it brown. We might end up using some black straight out of the tube on this painting before it's over with. Down the bottom, Down the bottom where it's so very, very black. Yeah. And up here, <laughs> here we're not there yet. Just a general rule, you want to save your, save your darkest dark and your lightest lights to the end for accents. these trees on this side get a good bit bigger. Come on, bro. 
much work for me. Yeah, they're, they're talking She's a person. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this should. The only other thing I'm going to do that to continue is once this gets good and dry, I'm going to come back with another layer of the dark at the bottom. And I'm not going to brush it on. I'll still tap it. And even, even if it looks like another little row of trees kind of down in the front, just to darken that bottom edge on the outsides, but not so much in the middle. So that gets a little oranger in the middle there. Tonight or wait till next week. But, but the next thing we got to do is we got to get this. Um, this water gradient to be um, a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother. It's kind of messy right now. And I may, yeah. need a, may need a bigger brush, I don't know. Um, ignoring the boats, ignoring the tree, just looking at it from a distance, what are the major color masses? And so we got a little bit of like a, a lighter, I guess. Corally color. Yeah, whatever color you would call that. It's kind, kind of got of a gray. A tent to it. Orally, yeah, pink and then that gets a lot more yellow here under the sun mm -hmm. and then that goes into the blue and an even darker blue over here on the corner. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be several colors and the reason I say we'll start it tonight because it's easier with this. If you're going to do thin layers of color that build up it's best Maybe. to put some on, let them dry, come back and do it again later. So mm -hmm. this will take a couple of iterations of this. So saying that you don't have to get it exactly perfect the first, first try. But I'm going to try to make that, that top color up here first. That's kind of... That grayish pinky color? Yeah. yeah. It's got... I might need some magenta. Because it definitely has that little... Yeah. There you go. That's actually pretty well on close uh -huh. right there. Uh -huh. It's got a lot, of, a lot of white in it. Uh, that had a little bit of blue, a little bit of vermilion. And so by painting this over top of what's here, and yeah. you... I'm just going to get kind of up to the edge of where I was because when it's when this is completely dry I want to tape that off and I want to do a real thin really bright line across the bottom to, to mark the very bottom edge of that. But I'm just going to get kind of close to it right now. We're using a lot of tape on this picture. <laughs> yeah. We're going to use a lot this of tape. teaching us how to tape. tape. Yeah, we're, going to tape. Boats, we're going to do some yeah. sketching, taping, whatever it takes. Yeah. All right. So. These, yeah. these layers are going to be, going to have some water in them. You know, what I'm trying to do here is really hide my brush strokes and, uh -huh. and blend this kind of smoother. That in the middle there has some more yellow to it. Try not to uh -huh. some yellow. It's got a little more vermilion to it. And yours, you know, matching it to the picture may not be exactly what yours needs. Yours uh -huh. may need to match what's above it more importantly than it right. does to what's in the picture. Mm -hmm. but this is just, you know, one of many layers that are going to be thin, washy layers that are just going to gently tint the color mm -hmm. a little at a time until we get it to where we want. Now all of this is going to have a texture on top of it. Mm -hmm. There's water texture that's going to hide any flaws that we have. It's really good. Yeah, so got this color, that color. <laughs> um, I'm not going to focus too much on the blues tonight. My, this transition between the blue and the uh, orange, though, if you look yeah. at how that works, what that first color that I made that had some blue uh -huh. and some gesso, and then it did have a little bit of the, the uh, vermilion in it, yeah. it kind of got to be that ugly color. It's got a lot more gesso. Yeah. It's kind of that gray color. That's yeah. the color that's in between there. And so I don't want to don't want to have a lot of that color in my painting, but that is the color that kind of hides mm -hmm. the line between those two. So you don't two. get that green? Yeah, mm. so you don't get He got a messy there. plate yeah. today. So, little bitty transition layers here and there. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's not a smooth, smooth transition there, but the way I like to do those is put a little paint on and come back with water, mm -hmm. kind of soften out the edges. Yeah. Then when I come back, I know with some blue on the, on the bottom part. Mm -hmm. This bottom corner I'm not too worried about because that's going to be almost oh, solid black up, when those yeah. boats get put in there. Mm -hmm. But this side needs to transition mm -hmm. a little bit better. Yeah. Um, 
soft edges, mm -hmm. fewer brush strokes. It doesn't have to be perfect as far as brush strokes go. But, you know, just trying to get rid of some of them here and there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you see where that's where that's heading. It's just layers of layers of color to soften those edges and it's mm -hmm. all the stuff that's underneath all of this ripples and right. stuff. So do as little or as much of that as you want to tonight and that's gonna be it. We're ready to tackle this water. Um, you notice I already kind of just did an outline sketch of, uh, well, tracing of where my boats are. That's just so you can see how much space they take up and how much of that water I'm not going to need to worry about. Mm. If you do this, though, make sure when you're painting you don't come up to the line and stop. <laughs> you know, paint through it because you, you'll be able to see that. You know, I'm, I'm just doing that so I don't worry about what's inside here because it's going to be covered. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to not stress about what's inside this shape here. So we, what we got to do tonight, a couple things. We're going to start on this water, and the, the way we're going to approach this is kind of to break it into sections. Um, everything in the boats, like I said, is we're not going to worry about anything here for now, and that includes this water on this side. Right now, we're not really going to worry about all of this water down here. So we can drop that out of your mind. The rest of it we'll take in sections um, of things that look similar. And then what I, what I mean is the texture. So if you notice the water here has very little texture, but there is some texture there. More like static or something in there. And that really follows, you can see kind of right in here where it changes to a little bit longer, longer pieces. And so that, if I had to draw a line there, and I guess I may even go ahead and do my <laughs> transfer paper and try to put a faint line, just something that I can cover up. Get it in there. Uh, put your paper and, yeah, <laughs> I got this in there, right? <laughs> there we go. So somewhere in here is where it's going to slightly change like for over. And that goes over really probably into this area where it's just that staticky look at the texture. Now my color shifts from blue to this orange to a little bit more yellow to kind of silver all across there. So I'm keeping that in mind too. The underpainting is going to help with that. But then we get another shift of kind of smaller lines that mm -hmm. comes down kind of this section right in here. Mm -hmm. And then it gets a little bit, little bit bigger in here. And then these down here are different. Mm -hmm. But you can see the overall pattern too of where these lines yeah. pull out this way. I'm not doing this very dark on my because I don't want it to show up too much, but as we get towards the bottom, you can definitely see those those lines kind of radiate mm -hmm. downward. Yeah. See how that works? Mm -hmm. that showed up at all. Yeah. Very faintly, but that's okay. But we'll take it a section at a time. So to start with, we're just going to start up here. And first thing is going to be, I want to have my colors um, underneath to be the right color. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to paint that same color on top, but if we would have started with just a white canvas and went and tried to paint this on top, it would not be nearly as easy as what we're going to do with the layers. So I think what I'm going to do, I've got, I'm close on the orange, but I know I need to, I got a little silver over here, but I know I need to get a little more blue kind of over here. I'm going to start on this side because this is kind of going to be behind this tree a little bit and be a little hidden. So I'm going to start with that, uh, get that. Now, I know I don't want a lot of water in this. Um, I'll start with just a gray. Just gray. All right, and it's got a little bit of that orange with it. Let's get close. That's what your picture's for, touch it on here and see. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more orange and a lot more white. white. That's a lot more like it. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to experiment with a couple ways to do this. I've, I got this fan brush because I think it may be kind of good at this. But if your paint is dry, what I kind of want to do is just drag some drag some paint across here. Actually, before I even do that, I'm going to put my tape back on my horizon. Mm -hmm. That way, I don't have to fight with it. Yeah. So the trick to this is just going to be just put some paint on there, but not cover it. These bristles, if I can get them to separate a little bit, they, they may help me with this. The trick is I, I don't want too much of this, I don't want this texture to get bigger than what it is on the, it doesn't let it look exactly like that, I just don't want it bigger than what's there. Yeah, I think going a little faster made it work better. Mm -hmm. Kind of dry brushing it on there. Now, don't paint a silver section, a yellow section, an orange <laughs> section. You've got to, you've got to <laughs> gradually go one into the other, and it may take a few layers. This is a light layer. I'll probably put a darker layer in there, too. But I'll go with section at a time. So from there, transition into a yellow. canvas will give you some texture if you let it <clears throat> and I will pretty quickly go to an orange or color because that that yellow is more yellow than what's in the picture just lightly let it lay across there Drag and dry brush. Now if you if you got water in your brush, or water in your paint, this is definitely not going to give you any, any texture at all. Yeah. <clears throat> and it, it's going to take some layers of this. Um, another technique we might try once you get it some some in there, and you want to put a little couple dark specks in there. Let me just uh, uh, if you need some dark uh, accents in there, just little spots, which there are some. Take your small brush and just put some dots, tiny little dots, <coughs> and get some thicker paint. And this paint under here is still wet, and that's okay. But I think then you could probably just take your finger and just smear those a little bit. So it's just staticky looking texture is all we really want to create right now. And if you can match your color and your texture to this, let's focus on this this easy section <laughs> from here to here <laughs> and let's get that done let's spend about 15 20 minutes on that and get it textured like that okay so i played with different ways to try to get that texture and what i kind of ended up on was you start going dark to light and then dark again and this softer bristle brush uh, after i got the colors down underneath it okay this seemed to work better for making that texture, but you have to, with the soft bristle brush, you got to get more water in the paint. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little easier to go dark over light this way. But I'll just show you, um, with enough water in it and just, just getting the very tips of the bristles, I'm just kind of gently touching those, just kind of tapping it in spots and kind of going side to side. Mm -hmm just letting the very tips of the bristle do the work and so I'm really just focused on that top two inches and I really only care about this transition area here mm -hmm. and that I think has gotten pretty good um, there's still some areas where it needs to be like the blue goes into the orange and the orange goes into the blue it's um, it's it's okay for it to be fairly smooth at, in this top two inches mm -hmm. but notice as we go down I've kind of started on this already these are going to get a little bit bigger and a little bigger, and I think the softer bristle is going to be better for that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make myself some dark blue here. That's just blue with a little brown in it. Got a lot of water, but if you notice, that brush doesn't separate enough mm -hmm. unless there's enough water in there. So what you sometimes have to do is make the paint, dry the brush out or wash it out. Um, and then just kind of go back into the tip with just the tips to get it to separate good. But I think as we go down a little further, we can put, just kind of put the paint in 
and I'm paying real close attention to these lines. I'm holding yeah. the brush horizontally, paying really close attention to the way those lines mm -hmm. are going. And these are going to be some bigger mm -hmm. kind of sections, bigger waves. Just a little paint on the very tip of the brush. It'll go a long way. It's not zebra stripes, you know, don't, don't get stripes. <laughs> they kind of go into each other. Yeah. Just the very tips of the bristle. And so the, the idea here is that the blue ones are going to slightly trail off into the into the orange area. And then we'll come back and do some orange ones that trail off into the blue area. And I may have to repeat that process three or four times before I actually like it. Right. Make sure you go off the canvas. <laughs> and this is just going to be the next three or four inches. Now the, the hardest part about this is going to be you don't really want a hard line where you start or stop right. anything. This has to smoothly transition up into the part that's got right. less detail and it's got to smoothly transition into the other colors. Okay. And that is the challenge. Yeah, once the paint is on you can kind of, as the brush gets empty of paint you can go back and kind of push that around a little Let's see how that gets a little bigger as I go down I'm gonna come on down probably to about here with that gradually getting bigger and bigger as I go down and the very last thing we'll do it may not get there tonight is to paint individual like go back in with a, a flat brush or something and paint some of these individual ripples in there on top of this so gotcha. all right tonight the goal tonight anyway is to finish all of the water on this side and above we're not worried about this over here yet all of this water hopefully by the end of the night this is done and we can even trace in these boats i uh, picked up some white uh transfer paper so when we do black this this in we can go back and trace it i'm going to go ahead and use some of it i think on the um on these waves in the corner yeah yours we don't have to have these exactly like they are in the picture However, if your angles get off and you start having them curve weird and make, you know, they're, they're, it's going to throw off the perspective of the picture. So I, I want to do this just for those ones on the very bottom. I'm going to take this and just give myself a, an idea of where these, uh, some of these larger pieces go. See how that is? As I get further up, I'm not too concerned about it being exact. Really, once you get up here, they're kind of mid sized and they're going to blend in, hopefully, with all the stuff I have already back there. Now, let's see if I had that transfer paper turned right. Did it show up at all? Very little. Nope. That bit on the back of your painting. No, it was right because I oh, see it okay. on there. I just didn't push okay. down hard enough. Okay. This white, I, I was scared to push too hard because I wasn't sure how it was going to, I didn't want it to be too dark. Too, uh -huh. too much on there. Let me do it down here. A little bit more. Push on it. Yeah. I'm not going to draw each, every, every individual wave. Still barely shows up, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Be a little easier to paint over. So what we what we end up with is we got some major color groups here. We've got to kind of see this, and I'm trying my best to kind of ignore this part and kind of focus on the bottom. But it's got to transition smoothly to it. So one thing I see is I've got these dark patches down here. I think I'm going to start there with some. Uh, I'm just going to pick up flat brush not quite worn out yet <laughs> let's see here that dark color at the bottom I said we may use some black out of the tube I don't want to do it here because this is obviously not nearly as dark right. as this over here so we're gonna yeah. make our own and it, it leans a little towards blue anyway a little bit of a bluish black but looking at this, you see there's no hard lines. Everything's going to be soft, <laughs> soft lines. So I want to put this in, and then probably going to take a 
another brush, or maybe just use this one and kind of get the paint out of it until it's dry, and then come back and kind of scrub out, soften the edges of everything. And it, that's not dark enough, but that's the first layer. All right? Come in here with these little patches of the dark in between the waves. Just gotta have really soft edges, and if you, if you don't follow the pencil mark exactly, it's not the end of the world. And just like when we paint a field of flowers or something, you really don't have to do all of them. You only have to do a few up front uh, to make it look like there's a lot of detail. Definitely want everything to be kind of smooth and flowy. You don't want any kind of like sharp edges or, or hard lines. is over there so <clears throat> I want to show you on this how we're going to do it in steps We'll do one step at a time together though. Let's do all the black and then come back and do but but the way this is gonna work and I'm doing a few so I can let that first one I did dry. But I'll I'll continue up with this. On each progressive step, you know, obviously this is not nearly as dark as what I have here. But I don't want to paint over the whole thing again. I'm gonna go just inside of it this time. And just kind of yeah, if it gets a little to the edge, it's okay, but that way it's just darker on the inside. That wasn't completely dry yet, but mm -hmm. what I mean is we just want to get it darker towards the middle, let those outside pieces stay soft, and each time I come back and put a layer, I'll put another layer, I'll put it just kind of mm -hmm. in the middle, so it's darker, <clears throat> darker in the center. Okay, I want to darken that all up. I want to go on up some so you can see kind of how I want to transition. Now, some of these are not nearly as dark as the others, but there's a few here that are. And uh, you know, again, yours don't have to be exact, but there's spots here and there where you got some darker waves. And this is a good thing because this kind of helps with our directional stuff. We kind of, you can kind of see how it leads into giving you that sense of what direction it's flowing. But all of these kind of have a shape of a, a, a diamond, but they're, you know, soft and kind of squish diamond shapes almost. I've been in this black, but I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little more blue to it as I go up and I probably need some phthalo blue and I didn't get any but before I get too far I'll I'll do some of that too. But the blue is gonna be another another step of our of our colors here. Thank you. So we're going to do this with the dark, and then with the blue, and then with another blue until we get into the oranges. And the way that orange, you can see it looks like the light peach color on the outside, then it gets more orange in the center. And we'll add those. So we're going to do some blues flowing that way, and some oranges flowing this way. But let's start on this dark. Let's, let's get out all of our, let's say, black to bluish black pieces in. Um, so don't, don't cover the whole thing. Just get the dark pieces and the little pieces up here that look darker and maybe some real small stuff further up but uh, no don't try to finish it just do the black and we'll come back and do it if you didn't if you didn't do that make sure you go under where the edge of the boat is you don't want to come up there and stop and be short of it and i may come back later and have to intensify some of the dark on this but for now i think that's where i want to be um we put a little piece of tape on this So the next color is this blue in here. 
this definitely has some phthalo in it. It's got a little white in it. Um, so I want to get as close to this mid-tone blue as I can get here. So I'm going to start with both blues. A little phthalo and a lot of Got a touch of brown in it. Did you hear me? What? A little phthalo and a lot of aqua. Uh, I think I think so. I think it's going to be a... The phthalo goes along. Yeah. It does. Okay. And then I'm going to lighten it a little bit. Yeah. I don't want to get too light right away because there's some lighter spots. I want to leave some room to grow there. So yeah, that's my yeah, that's... pretty spot on right there. So no white in it. It's got some bit. white in it. Yeah. yeah. So it was both blues, a touch of brown, and the white to get it to the right value. Yeah. And I'm going to try to just kind of get most of it out of my brush. So this is the in betweens. Now notice in this picture you can kind of follow one line where it kind of goes up and down and goes through you know it can it breaks up in spots but you can kind of follow one and see where it continues even these big ones down here they kind of continue all the way down this one goes into here so like where this one comes off of here it continues here also there they all kind of flow into each other. This one can kind, of, kind of come down into here and kind of disappear. So I just kind of put some of that on until my brush is dry and then I'm just going to kind of push it around that part. Just a water brush to kind of blend with. softening you know put it on and then soften it if you overwork it it's going to be you're going to get too uh cover too much but i definitely want to kind of smooth those those transitions between the, the where one wave stops and one starts there's no hard lines smooth and faded one to the other and a flat brush is good for this because you can use that, you can make a wide spot like that or you can do real thin this way. And this is right on top of my white, uh, white lines. Connect your connect your lines a little bit. Let them even if they break in between, you kind of can see where one picks up and the other one left off. And I want to get some of this lighter color on up into here. And when I get up here, I'm not really looking at over here. I'm kind of just maintaining my lines and maintaining those little cells, you know, kind of creating those little pockets and they get smaller and smaller as they go back. Some are going to look lighter, some are going to look darker. Back to this point, they don't need to be too detailed because they're getting so small. And when you get any, any higher than this, there's hardly any detail at all. They're just kind of just kind of go back and forth and fill in the gaps. And I'm leaving some of that orange showing too because that shows through. Now, on these front ones, I want to make sure that they're nice and smooth. Make sure that they connect where they're supposed to. How soft that is. And the very front ones need to be really soft. <coughs> Up here, this is kind of... I'm going to come up in here a little further with some of that, but not too much. But then, then is when you're going to want to do just a slightly lighter version of that same color. We're not getting into the orange yet, but a lighter version of that same color once that's dry. And this is what you don't really want to get carried away with. But then you start creating some of these little pockets of 
reflection on there and they're smaller fewer now do them in, in light blue first we'll add some orange to it later we'll make them even lighter the ones that need to be putting some in then we'll come back and smooth them out Stuff over here. Stuff here. so when the brush gets dry come in here and do some more smoothing to that Then eventually, we're going to go into, it's almost white, still going to have a little blue, almost white in some of these spots. though and do too much. <laughs> yeah. That's going to give us a spot to rest some of that orange we'll come through and that'll be kind of the last thing step is the orange. But where I'm putting white, the whiter areas now is where I'm going to definitely have some orange showing through. So definitely not too much of that but and I always want to go behind my boat so work on that do some light blue some lighter blue and okay. got a little bit of a smaller flat brush and see I've got my my light spots are pretty bright but they're still light blue so two steps to this one is the tan the, the kind of orange background color and then the the brighter right orange on. foreground color so that background color, and you may not match yours to this exactly, but yeah. your sky is probably more like what you want to shoot for. I'm going to start with some uh -huh. uh, yellow, a tiny, tiny amount of uh, vermilion. Of vermilion, thank you, <laughs> and some white, making like the glow color rise. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely too yellow, but um, this will have. Hard to get just a little bit of that. Vermilion. <laughs> it's kind of a peach color almost. Yeah. This is just the under the under color on there. Okay, yeah. so that needs to be more white. Yeah. I can put a touch of that blue in it too. It's not going to be the end of the world. That'll tone it down just a little bit. Blue and orange are opposite colors, uh -huh. so they'll it'll it'll kind of little. soften it a little bit mm -hmm. there. Okay, so that is about the color I want. Mm -hmm. And so in my highlights, and I've kind of gone off script from what was here with my highlights, but I want to choose some spots where, and, and think about where the sun's coming in, some spots where that, that white is going to be more mm -hmm. orange. And these kind of do have a little bit more of a hard line. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not super soft. Right. It's okay if this has a little bit of a harder line. But I want to kind of have them to where they're all kind of facing the same direction. Instead of doing them both ways, I'm kind of going to do the kind of the left side on all of them. They're just a touch of the right, but it's for the most part, it's going to be this left side. So as I go up, see how you that color has to kind of blend itself in with everything else. So I'm going to kind of work this back into that color. And it may change a little as it goes up too. Mm -hmm. I mostly want to let the brush kind of get dry. Mm -hmm. And I'll start scrubbing in some of these little areas up here. Just because every step of the way you want it to have a smooth transition between 
what you did before. Did you see how that swath of light kind of goes this way? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of maintaining that as well. Get dry brush some, some of this in here on top of what's there. So you can see it show through. And with this, sometimes painting water, what you want to do is just use more water. So we put this on there. It's kind of messy. Come back with just water and push that around a little bit. More of a wash at this point, just to make those colors transition correctly. Yeah. Something more like that. Make sure I get plenty of the foreground, midground. in the back as well. Let's see this color get in here. To have that color fade in with that dark orange color, I'm gonna have to kind of put it on here, push it around. you have enough of that. <laughs> Some smaller stuff too. And then you want to come back with some more vermilion in that same color. Now I'm going to try to match my, my brighter color in the sky. Mine may be a little different than what's in the picture, so I'm just going to try to go with what I have on my sky here. Mm -hmm. That's probably yeah, more like it right there. Yeah. And this is inside. It's a corner of the brush here. Inside of that lighter one. Mm -hmm. Even smaller. Looking at it up close, it looks weird. But I'm hoping that when I step back from it, it's gonna, we don't scrub it. It's gonna sell the illusion. Now these are a little more solid. They're, I'm kind of letting the back end of it kind of feather off. And I may come back and soften it just a little. But they're pretty contained. Some of that color, as the brush gets dry, it may even help it dry. Some, some of that color can even be seen in the, yeah, the back. back sides of these a little bit. Come back all the way, all the way up with some of those. But again, it gets smaller and smaller as you go up. When you get to this part, it's just about having that color in there. Mm -hmm. Not really about shapes or anything. It's just about having that that color represented. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if you're far enough away, does that sell it? I may need to soften those up just a little. Yeah, if you soften them a little bit, especially on the underside, it will. Yeah. It'll sell it. Yeah. Feels yeah. weird to be painting. Those weird colors all yeah, in a bunch. Yeah, that's doing better. Yeah. But that is the mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. And do a little step back. Do a little. When we stick our boats up there for. Yeah. To make your confidence level go up if you need. Two more sessions on this one. We're going to do 
hopefully finish the boats tonight and then next week we can finish the trees we might even get started on them tonight there may not be a whole lot more instruction from this point on just because it's going to be um you know you can see what needs to be done here we're going to trace again the boats and i've got the two different um transfer papers over there now you got white and black so um if you haven't already blacked everything in um i would say do that first i made this black out of blue and brown because it's not as dark as the true tube black because i want to save some of that because if you notice like some of this writing here is not quite as dark. Some of this writing here is not quite as dark, mm -hmm. especially right there, yeah. to give that boat a little bit of shape. Mm -hmm. But down here is really dark, and I want to save that tube black to the end so I, I can use that really dark. But having said that, this still is very thin, and I probably want to start with just another another wash of that or another coat of um, my homemade black on there for do that. Do we need to paint in the white on the boat like you do? That's the water. Yeah. You can put it back in. Anyway, um, <laughs> so then the next <laughs> thing is going to be to, if you hadn't done the water, if the, the water, I just left that there and it kind of from a distance, it looks okay. But I will go back and kind of clean the edges up and kind of fill it in. If you notice how this looks, the boat is above the water. It's not down in the water. Right. The, it looks like the tide has come up or whatever. The boat filled up and then the water went back down. And so there's water collected in the boat. Um, so yeah, I'm going to clean that water up, mainly the contrast of the really light colored water, the dark black underneath there, and this orange, rather than matching the, the picture here, I want to try to match it to my sky. If you'll notice that color in here kind of matches this mm -hmm. orange here. Mine's going to be a little different, but that's what I'm going to try to go for in there. And we're pretty much just going to paint the boat. When we get to this water part. I'm going to just draw these shapes in there and just kind of mimic the way that we, you remember when we did the lily pads and we had to just do the little shapes in the water. Yeah. They don't have to make sense, just kind of paint what you see there. Um, but let's get started there, black it in first and then we'll start doing the tracing again and drawing the details on the boat. And so you're blacking it in on the edge? Yeah, I did it all the way off to the edge so we could, uh, so I could come back and put the lighter okay. water in. Alright, that's it. I don't even want to paint nothing. I'm just going to talk. All we got left to do is to uh, put this tree in, this little bit of trees and these over here. Um, we've gone this far trying to make it realistic. What could uh, what could really kill it right now is if you put some cartoon trees in there. So I think <laughs> be careful. And, and I've, I normally would not have done this. I would probably just have painted my own trees. But I went ahead and traced these so you can see the idea. Uh, just if you are going to trace them, just trace the, the main trunk don't try to get all of that stuff in there and if you don't get all those leaves that's okay the main thing is that these trees are here the and you could some people have even talked about leaving those off completely but they're important for the the weight of the painting okay all of this water over here with these boats being offset that's intentional in the in the design of it i guess you'd say the composition but all of this water has a lot of weight to it in the in the composition and so this side is meant to, to balance that out um so i think the tree is pretty important and it kind of frames in this sunset a little bit gives us some good contrast up here in the light parts and it lets us cover up some of our sky that we promised we'd cover up <laughs> when we first started <laughs> so uh really just going to trace in the the trunks of those but i'll go through real quick when you're doing trees tree trunks in general. I'm going to start with some black. Just going to make some make some black. The, the key is getting the ink consistency to your paint. Getting it to where it's got enough water in it that it'll flow. Mm -hmm. That's still not there. Enough water. And if it, it may not cover solid, but you can always put another coat. Mm -hmm. But important that it flows. Then you want to roll to a tip when you're doing those little bitty, you know, you can roll the tip of that brush to a point mm -hmm. when you get ready to do these little bitty um, pieces, you can get a really fine line on that. But a good trick is to start in the inside of the trunk, start in the thick part and go out. 
if you're going to do branches, you know, if you want to do a branch out on your own. And I, I always say just hold the brush perpendicular to the canvas. You're not this way or that way or this way. Just hold it straight in. Get just enough paint on the tip. Start inside the trunk. And I, it's sometimes good to just kind of keep rolling it as you go mm -hmm. to let that, it kind of dances around and let it get thinner and thinner. If it breaks up, that's okay. It doesn't have to be solid all the way down. And it's best to have more of like a shaky, uh, shaky movement to, instead of a smooth, flowy, you know, branch. It's best to kind of have it shaky. And the branches generally end upward. If you ever noticed that, they kind of grow up towards the sun. So just a couple little tricks on those. But I'm going to put the trunks in get as much little branches as I want to where I feel like it's weighted right and then I think at the very end um, and we may come back and put this on the camera is just put a little bit more put a little bit of a rim around the outside of those limbs of kind of a yellowish glow if mm -hmm. you notice in the picture you can barely see it yeah. but it, there's a little bit of a glow around mm -hmm. around the trunks of those trees so let's just paint some trees and we'll finish this one up do you need a, you need a camera and a, one of those drop-down screens of your... Yeah, that would be nice. Let me get this kind of orange color. Let's see if that works. I think it's just going to be real thin. At least, at least three or four leaves on that bin. Come on. It's not completely... <laughs> the leaves ain't completely gone yet. <laughs> Got a few leaves in there. Wait, I don't see no leaves on that one. Well, yeah, I did too. Sort of. They're ghost leaves. Both sides of this trunk just to uh, give it a little bit of a glow. You barely be able to even see that, but especially once it dries. Looks like it should be on Lake Ufala. I'm not so sure on that boat. Usually it's got a hole in it or something. <laughs> it is taking on water, isn't it? <laughs> Tell them what we can do with a good boat. <laughs> just a little bit. That's I think that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go further up the tree, just the just the bottom of it. Appreciate it.